My name is Dr. Devaruti Khaldar and in today's video session, I am going to discuss about child in need of care and protection. Often, I have seen that many law students or even the child rights activists who would love to learn more about uh, like you know child rights etc. They might not be able to understand what is the proper nature of child in need of care and protection. So in this video, I am going to discuss about child in need of care and protection and uh, I am also going to give uh, like you know the classification of children who are in need of care and protection. So the first definition of child in need of care and protection basically which comes in our uh, mind or which the JJ Act 2015 basically discusses can be found in section 2 sub clause 14. Now that is an exhaustive definition and it has got nearly about 12 points to explain that who can be considered as a child in need of care and protection. However. I have made a classification of child in need of care and protection on the basis of this very subclause under four main topics. One is those children who are not in their family care system or the family home system or any other institutional care system. Those children who are suffering from some kind of psychological or mental issues, challenges, etc those children who are in physical danger that means they are going to apprehend or they are physically challenged or they are going to apprehend some challenge from the uh, perspective of physical uh, like you know danger perspective security perspective and lastly those children who are in imminent danger of physical as well as sexual sexual abuse uh, perspectives or issues so now let us concentrate on the children who are in need of care and protection and uh, they are the first category of children that is those children who are not in the family home care or institutional care system. If we see JJ Act 2015 uh, and also the amended version that if we look into it we would actually get to see there are certain uh, like sub clauses of section 2 sub clause 14 which would show us that these children can also be considered as children in need of care and protection. Now these can be found in section 2 sub clause 14 sub clause 1 I mean clause 1 4 sorry clause 1 6 7 and also 11. Now who are these children as for the uh, for example the first one those children who are found without any home or who are found without any ostensible means of subsistence. What does it mean? It actually means that those children who basically may not have any uh, home or for example any permanent home or even their family are not living in a proper home condition. They may be street children or they may be abandoned, they may be neglected. That means they either may not have a proper like you know shelter where they can actually have their proper um, food, shelter or clothing kind of mechanisms or these children may not have their uh, parents or guardians with them or these children may be 
coming from socio economically poor background whereby they would be living with their parents or guardians but neither the parents nor the children might be having any sort of ostensible means of subsistence this may also include child beggars who might be living on the streets next we get to see run away child now this run away children or run away child many actually especially the students of law they might mistake them as those children who have run away from their parental homes no it is wrong certain children are there i mean several groups of children are also there who might run away from the institutional care system that means they might have run away from the observation homes the children's home or even in certain cases they have run away from the boarding schools or the daycare schools or and also uh, if you consider it holistically these children may also include those children who as many law students basically understand they have run away from their homes also due to several reasons next we got to get to see another kind of child that is missing child now this missing child and this runaway child they can be overlapping with each other but this missing child may also be children who have been forced fully forcefully uh, taken away from their parents or guardians that can be coming under the broader umbrella term of kidnapping abduction etc plus they might also be those children who have been accidentally missing you know from uh, the family home or from their families the other kind of children who are in need of care and protection who would be coming under this broad category are runaway children whose parents or guardians cannot be found this can happen that the child may have encountered some very tragic things or the child probably have uh, like you know uh, ran away from the family home etc because there are no fit guardian or for example the child has run away from some care institutional care system but his biological parents or his legal guardians or his fit guardians are not found even after there had been uh, like you know uh, efforts made by the child line or by some other like you know non governmental as well as governmental institutions next we get to see those children uh, the safety and well being of that those children etc that are on stake that means they are not the runaway children only they are not the missing children only but even if they stay somewhere on the streets etc but they are not at all safe that means they don't have the fit guardians or their parents are missing or like you know they their parents are basically like non assigned that means they they probably have been kidnapped and uh, they are living with a uh, like you know the racket for begging or trafficking etc these children can also be may not have their homes may not be in the uh, homely or uh, like you know any institutional care system and these children can also be considered as child in need of care and protection another sort of another category of children can include those children who does not have parents and no one is willing to take care of them these children often we know them as orphans so in sub several cases we can get to see that uh, the parents are dead the parents may be or one parent may be dead the other parent have abandoned or like you know left the child uh, in the care of some other person but even that person has also uh, neglected left the child abandoned the child and this child is just a street child i mean he is growing up in some bad uh, like you know environment etc he does not have any proper home etc he is living just out of like you know the trash etc these kinds of children can also be considered as child in need of care and protection and this category of children can also come within this broader umbrella term that we are like right now using that is children who may not have proper home care or who may not have uh, like you know proper shelter who might not be in the proper institutional care system next missing children whose parents or guardians could not be found now there is a difference between those children whose parents are not at all found the second uh, like category in this is that those children whose parents or guardians could not be found that which actually implies that even though there are parents and guardians but they are intentionally hiding number 1 or 
they actually cannot be found because they do not exist that means either they have died or they have like you know intentionally uh, uh, like abandoned the children they have gone somewhere that means there cannot be uh, like you know no link can be established between the parents guardians and the child who have been found or who have been rescued from the uh, like you know streets or from some uh, like neg negative environment and those children who are affected in armed conflict civil unrest natural calamity etc and obviously these children may not be expected to basically live in a proper home uh, like you know atmosphere or in a proper secured uh, like you know institutional care system etc so that these kinds of children can also be considered as child in need of care and protection The next category of children basically can come under the broader uh, like uh, term of those children who are suffering from psychological or mental health issues. These categories of children may be found under section 2, uh, 14, uh, clauses 4 and also 9. Now these children may include those children who are mentally ill. Uh, maybe those children who are medically uh, like you know mentally ill like for example they are uh, like uh, suffering from some kind of autism or any sort of mental uh, health condition etc they are mentally challenged uh, like uh, obviously these two are also overlapping but you know they can be suffering from some mental retardation etc next they are deeply traumatized and this mental condition that means the mentally challenged condition is temporary and it can be revived back through proper counseling or after proper counseling so they may be traumatized and they may be vulnerable and may rely on uh, some kind of substance abuse and just to come out of that negative thinkings also they are basically very much vulnerable towards this like you know narcotic drugs uh, abuse etc so they may also be considered as coming within the uh, like you know uh, concept of those children who are mentally challenged or who are like you know who have got some kind of psychological issues and also there are certain other uh, children are also there who may be coming under the psychological or mental health issues are those children who are maybe who may who may have some mental uh, illness issues or who may have some mental retardation issues who may have some uh, kinds of this kind of deep traumatizing issues and there may not be any fit guardian who may be considered as fit for taking care of them now this is something which is conditional because jj act 2015 says that this particular category or this particular condition that these parents may be or these guardians may be considered as not fit for taking care of the children this has to be decided by the cwc so the, here the discretionary power the uh, like you know past inquiry reports etc social inquiry reports etc these play a very significant role The next category of children that we are going to discuss now that would be coming under the concept of children in need of care and protection are those children as I discussed uh, just a couple of minutes ago is those children who are in physical danger that means due to their own physical disability, disability etc they are not able to uh, like you know perform uh, the regular functions like their other counterparts who are absolutely normal. So these children can be those who are physically challenged or those who may stay with abusive parents and guardians and they are in some kind of like you know risk in some kind of physical danger of getting harmed this also includes these kinds of children also includes those children who are basically child lovers and they are engaged in hazardous uh, like you know activities uh, this can be some activities which are uh, like you know considered within the family business system for example if a child is engaged in a family business system which is doing something with uh, like say for example glass cutting or diamond uh, polishing or even agate stone polishing polishing etc where the dust you know is very much poisonous or the child is being uh, made to uh, work in a condition which is not safe for the child or even the child is going to be uh, like you know in 
engaged in the work uh, whereby his school hours his uh, like you know right to education is basically being hampered and also in such conditions the child is not getting basic nutritious uh, you know meals or the rest etc that is needed for the holistic development of the child next also the those children who are in physical danger these children can also include the category of those children who are basically living in an area of armed conflict civil in a uh, civil unrest natural calamity as i had also included this particular category of children in the other categories also but since they are also living in physical danger that there is a risk for their physical safety security etc these kind of children can also be included under the broader head of those children who are in physical danger or who are in the risk of physical danger obviously last but not the least again this is overlapping those children who are abundant and those who are also living in constant hunger also this may include those female children who might not have proper puberty hygiene so all these things like you know the these uh, concepts can be considered when we are discussing about those children who are in need of care and protection and those children who needs to be considered as those uh, like you know categories of children who are basically living in uh, like you know constant uh, risk uh, or who are basically living in a condition which may you know promise some kind of physical danger to the children and therefore they need to be rescued they need to be rehabilitated and also they need to get some proper counseling proper shelter uh, and also proper care and protection the last category in this regard that means coming within the broader understanding of child in need of care and protection as per my understanding and also if you see section 214 of the jj act 2015 uh is that category which basically speaks about those children who are in imminent danger of physical and sexual abuse danger risk whatever term we would like to assign here so these kinds of like you know categories of children can be found in section 2 sub clause 14 7 and 10 of the jj act 2015 i am again reiterating that you know this term is not exhaustive but some other categories of children can also be included under this broad understanding so these uh, this particular category may also include children who are victims of child marriage or who are like you know vulnerable victims of child marriage who may also be physically mentally disabled and there is no fit guardian to protect them or to take care of them uh, they are vulnerable to child trafficking illegal prostitution because they may be they may have been put up in a position or they may have been put up in an environment where they are vulnerable to be exploited they can these children can also include i mean this category of children can also include those children who are vulnerable for online child prostitution child trafficking etc and also those children who are in imminent danger of being used for unconscionable gains that means uh, i'm giving you a hypothetical condition say for example if the child is physically or mentally challenged and the child cannot basically uh, like you know speak or express uh, what's happening with the child so the parents or the guardian whoever uh, like you know is taking care of the child so called taking care of the child is leaving the child with some other uh, like you know uh, person or a party whereby the child is basically uh, like you know from outside we are getting to understand that the child is going to be taken care of but you know when the child is going to that third person the third person is basically exploiting the child or the third person is using the child for some kind of you know uh, illegal activities and from this entire vicious connection the parents or the guardians or the caretakers of such kinds of children they are basically gaining some illegal profit so these kinds of children can also be considered as children who are in need of care and protection under this broader category that is those children who are in imminent danger of physical and sexual abuse so these were the broad uh, understanding about child in need of care and protection and uh, if you have any doubts or queries or you would like to know more about child rights or cyber law or criminal law etc please put it in the comment box i will try to 
uh, answer your queries and uh, thank you so much please subscribe to my channel thank you